Hello, welcome to SS Unitech Social Day site, and this is continuation of Azure Databricks tutorial. So today we are going to start with the Databricks file system. So what is the Databricks file system? How we can access that inside the Databricks, and how we can upload the file inside the DBFS, and how we can read the data from that file. We will see in this video. So let's get started. So first thing we have to understand what is DBFS. So Databricks file system is a distributed file system and which is mounted into Azure Databricks workspace. So what does it mean by mounted? So mounted means we can say it is attached inside the Databricks. So we have created the connection and by using that connection we will be attaching this file system inside the Databricks workspace and it is also available inside the Databricks cluster. Next, the DBFS is an abstraction on top of scalable object storage. Next, the default storage location in DBFS is also known as DBFS root. And inside the root, we will be seeing three folders. First is the file store. Second is the Databricks dataset. Next is the Databricks result so like these three folders will be created by default while creating databricks so we will be able to see only the first inside the ui which is the file store and apart from that like last two folders we will not be able to see directly inside the ui so for that we have to write some code for accessing these two locations so don't worry we will be accessing those by writing the code you will be seeing in this video so what type of information we will be having in these three folders so in the file store it is imported data files generated plots and uploaded libraries so we will be also uploading the files directly inside the file stores next is the databricks data sets so it is sample of public data sets so under this we will be having few of the public data sets so you can access and you can play with the data so that we will see last is the databricks result so the files generated by downloading the full result of the query will be keeping in this folder here we can see the data so we are playing with the data only so data will be available in one of the storage location so that could be your azure blob storage and inside the dbfs we will be accessing this data and inside the meta store that will be on your databricks so we can divide this into three parts mainly here is the databricks and here is your actual data and it is stored inside the azure blob storage and dbfs will be making the connectivity and attaching that inside the databricks now go to on the browser and we'll try to see in the practical so i have already logged in inside the databricks and we have already created one of the cluster in the last videos so if you haven't watched those videos i would strongly recommend to watch that video i'll provide the link of those video in the description of this video now here if we can go directly inside the data so inside the data pane we cannot see any option for the dbfs so how we can access the dbfs here so for that you have to go on your login email id and then you can go on the admin console and inside the admin console you will see like the users group so you can directly jump inside the workspace setting so under the workspace setting we can scroll down side and where we'll see the advanced option so under the advanced option we will be seeing for the dbfs file browser which is disabled now so we have to make this as enabled so when we will be making this as enabled then we have to refresh and reload this page so after that we will be able to see the dbfs inside the data pane so let me quickly go inside the data pane and under the data pane now in the top side we can see the browse dbfs earlier we were unable to see the dbfs here now let me click on that so here as you can see we are having the file store under that we can see like this is the file which is the ns.xlsx and this is the 
folder so when first time you will be login here you will not see this ns i have uploaded this ns file here so that's why we will be seeing and under the tables as of now we don't have any so here we can see in the top side is the path so dbfs is the optional either you we can provide the dbfs if you are not providing the dbfs then automatically it will be taking that now as i told you in the slide so we are having three folders first is the file store then the databricks data sets and databricks result but if you can see here we can see only file store other two folders are not visible here so how we can access those for that we have to go into the notebook and we'll try to create the notebook and we'll be accessing and reading from there so in another window i have login with the databricks so let me try to go inside the workspace go to on the user and go to on the login and after that let me create a new notebook here and let me call this notebook as one point demo something like this so here the default language which is python or we can select sql scala r so i am going with the python and after that the cluster so this cluster we have created let me click on create so once we click on create it will be creating a new notebook let me close this so this is the notebook and here we can see the cluster is terminated so we can go and try to start the cluster so it will take around 2 to 3 minute to be started now we are having few libraries which is the python library for reading the folder path so which is the db utils you have to remember this and after that fs for the file system then ls for the list of the file and folders and after that we can provide simply backslash now if we are going to execute this then it will be displaying all the folder and files which is available under the dbfs root directory so let me try to execute it so it will be taking little bit time because your cluster is not up and running so let's wait until this will not be started and this query is not executed so as it got an syntax error because we have to use this slash let me try to execute it again so now it is going to return all these files but this is not visible as much clear so we can use the display function so this display function will be going to arrange this in a tabular format that we can see over here so as we can see the first column which is the path so this is the path and after that the name then the size and then the modification time so the first one which we can see we are able to see inside the ui which is the file store but other two are not visible as i have explained inside the slide these two folders are also available if you want to see how many files are available under this folder we can copy this path and instead of this slash we can specify this dbfs is the optional either you can use that or you can skip if you are going to use this it will return the same output so under this we can see we are having some of the sample data for the covid so let me quickly go inside this folder and we'll try to see how many files and folder are there so once we execute it so it will be going to return how many files and folders under this let me go into the second path and we'll see how many files and folders are there so we can simply copy the path and we can specify the path inside this ls and it will return the files and the folder under that particular location so under this if you can go and we'll try to see then we can see we are having this one of the file and which is the csv file so we want to read the data from this csv file and we'll see what type of data it is having so let me quickly go here and for reading the data from any particular file location we have to use the spark dot read dot option and under the option we can specify like header 
so header is the true so that's why we can specify header as true and after option we can simply call like csv and we can specify the path so this syntax you have to remember let me try to copy this path and we can specify the path here so after that let me take this in a data frame so if you are not very clear about all these then don't worry in our upcoming videos we will be seeing in detail about the data frame and how you can read all these so don't worry for now as of now you can only understand we can read the data into the files so here let me try to show the data under this so either we can use the show command or we can also use the display command so let me going to show you both so inside the show here we can see it is going to return the data as as you can see here but here it is also truncated few of the data that you can see like the three dots so it is the data is truncated so instead of using the show i always prefer to use the display command so display command will be going to return the data as a table so inside the tabular format that is quite easy so it is executing and here we can see we are having all these tables data this is all about the databricks data set now let me quickly go here and try to upload a file so before going to upload a file let me try to open the file first so i can show you what type of data it is having so this is one of the employee.csv file and it is having the data for the id name age and department so let's try to upload that data into the dbfs location and after that we'll try to read the data so we can go here and here in the top side we can see the option for the upload so let me select this one so i want to keep under the file store only so click on the upload here we can browse let me quickly go here and try to select the employee.csv file so here we can click on done so it should be available employee.csv file now let me quickly go into the notebook and we'll try to read the data from that particular employee.csv file so let me quickly go here and try to execute it so it will be returning all these folders which is available under the dbfs root directory and under this we should be having the employee.csv file so let me try to copy this path and here let me specify the path let me try to execute so this data frame will be having the employee.csv files data now let me show you that data by using this display command so you can see like the id name age and department so this is all about the dbfs and how you can play all these if you are not very clear then you can learn and remember few of the libraries which is a db utils in our upcoming videos we will be seeing in detail about the databricks utilities and under that how many type of utilities are available and how we can use all those so thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos see you in the next video